Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 4 StarCraft 2 Strategy. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Protoss strategy. Now in this particular replay, our Protoss player is Nani, and our Terran opponent is Select. Go right into Nani Vision now. Again, this is a Protoss strategy. What we're going to be looking at today is a good solid build uh, against that Marine Marauder mix early game. Uh, eventually transitioning into that Marine Marauder Medivac build, uh, and this particular game the Terran opponent doesn't get too far into Medivacs, and we'll see exactly why. It's going to involve going for a, a basic two-gate robo-build, um, and in fact, eventually it's going to be into a three-gate robo-build. And using the Immortals as a strong, hard counter to those Marauders, and then aside from that, just going with a basic unit composition of Zealots, Sentries, and Stalkers to deal with the Marines and Immortals as well. Um, especially if you can really push out strong against your opponent if they do anything like attempt to expand. Um, a lot of times when Terran opponents go for that kind of three racks or four racks uh, early marine marauder heavy build, um, a lot of times they end up sitting on some minerals that they're able to expand with and if they do that and if you can push out um, in lieu of that expansion you can do very well for yourself. Uh, now as far as the opening that we're looking at here, um, it did start off with that 9 pylon and that 13 gateway as opposed to that 12 gateway. Um, that slight delay of course allowing additional time for this worker production um, as opposed to spending those extra 50 minerals on that gateway immediately, spending those 50 minerals on that additional worker. Uh, people have asked me before when I discuss how slightly delaying buildings um, as a in, in <coughs> in respect to normal build times, how slightly delaying buildings can help your economy. That is why, because you spend those 50 minerals on an additional worker as opposed to spending them on that building instead. Um, and just, you know, doing that um, early on in the game can help boost your economy just a little bit. Particularly in this map, the reason you're going to see something like a 13 or 14 gateway as opposed to a 12 gateway is because the uh, run distance is so long, you don't have to worry too much about early, early pressure. So slightly delaying that uh, initial gateway by one supply isn't going to hurt you that much in, in terms of early defense. Um, and it can help your economy quite a bit. So that's precisely why we're seeing that here. Um, now, this simulator came down at 15 supply. The cybernetics we dropped at 18 supply. Um, so again, we're going to just start off with that pretty standard opening. We're not going for a two gate or anything like that. Clearly, again, for the reason that this is such a long run distance, um, early pressure doesn't really make too much sense. Uh, not going to be that effective just because the distance is so, so long. Now we got the Cyber Next Core up. First thing we're going to do is start researching that Warp Gate research. Um, that began at 24 supply. Uh, after this, we're going to be looking to get another simulator. This build that we're going for is very gas intensive. Um, so again, what, what we're looking at is uh, basically that two or three gate robo build. Um, it's initially a two gate, ends up turning into a three gate robo build. Um, and we have just enough, uh, basically, the reason we can support that 3-gate as opposed to that normal 2-gate robo-build is because uh, we've been spending all of our Chrono Boost um, exclusively here on the Nexus. As you can see, no Chrono Boost are going down on this Warp Gate research. Uh, and in doing so, that's a huge boon to our economy, so we're able to support that additional 3rd gateway. Um, had you been going for a fast Warp Gate research and spending your Chrono Boost on this Warp Gate research, um, you probably wouldn't be able to support that 3rd gateway, and you'd have to look to do a 2-gate robotics build as opposed to a three gate robotics build. So something to keep in mind, if you intend on spending your Chrono Boost on this Warp Gate research, um, again, you're not as likely to be able to support that third gateway. Um, but if you're spending it on your economy, like we're seeing Nani do here, then you can, in fact, do that. Now, as you can see, this robotics facility has gone down. That dropped at 29 supply. Um, first thing we're going to be looking to get out of that is our observer and then following that up with the mortals um, when we do see that marauder heavy army but that decision isn't going to be made again until we see if there are any heavy marauders on the board and uh, when we did poke in our opponent's base we weren't able to get too far because there were some units in here but we did, did, did just see some pretty basic stuff Orbital Command warping in uh, the barracks and the supply depot. So it doesn't look like anything too fancy is going on. Unfortunately, we didn't get a glimpse of the refineries, and that, in fact, um, limits our in intel as far as to what they're getting. Um, and that's going to be part of the reason we go with the standard opening as far as units that we additionally come out with. Um, starting with the Zealot, following that up with the Stalker, and then lastly getting that Sentry. That's going to defend you pretty well against early pressure. Um, it's basically a nice mix of units and abilities that's going to help you deal with any early pressure you could be seeing. Now, as you can see, like I said, with this third gateway is down because, again, we were spending all of our Chrono Boost on our probes, getting our Econ nice and strong. We're able to support this third gateway, um, and we did drop that third gateway down at 
35 supply, that second gateway here coming down to 30 supply. So now this is the makings of our, um, of our composition, of our units here, just these three gateways in this robotics facility. Um, getting out that immortal and moving in our observer, we do see that they are in fact going for that marine marauder heavy build. Here are these three barracks, pretty typical stuff that you're going to see. And then also here's this orbital command. Now in seeing this orbital command and knowing that he's dumped resources into it, this is something I've said many times before and will continue to say. In seeing this, you have two choices really. You either push out yourself and try to induce damage because of the fact that they've dumped so many resources into this expansion. Uh, that is in fact what Nani is doing here, so that's what you should look to do yourself. Uh, or you can go ahead and expand. Those are your two choices typically. Uh, as you can see, scan going down here from select on Nani's base. Um, so going to be pushing forward uh, and going to try to do as much damage as possible, so, uh, getting forward scouting here with our observer. Um, definitely a good idea to try to make sure they don't get a scan on top of that and destroy it. Uh, you don't want to lose the Vespi and that cost for this observer. Um, <coughs> and definitely, of course, having that intel uh, from that keeping that observer alive is very important as well. If you do attempt to engage your opponent and they try to run away like that, dropping those force fields to cut their army in half, and even just to take out a few units, it can be beneficial. You're not losing much. All that, all that you're really losing is energy. Uh, and that, of course, does regen itself. So there's no reason not to dump those force fields even to take out just a few units. Um, the amount of damage you do to them economically is great and you take no economic damage in return. So definitely a smart idea here. Basically what we're going to be looking to do is just keep producing these immortals. Um, we have this forward pylon here to re it, to send out reinforcements as well. Um, so yeah, I mean this is, this is basically what we're attempting to do. We saw that expansion so we're going to be pushing out and trying to do as much damage as possible. Um, and as you can see, the opponent was trying to engage here, uh, going with those force fields to help chop their army in half and take them out. Very, very, very effective. Definitely something I suggest doing. Um, and unfortunately, Select did try to move back his command center to drop it again, but uh, as you can see, his Marine Marauder force wasn't enough to take out our army. And I mean, that's, uh, that's really the key thing to note here um, in expansion. Expanding can be dangerous if your opponent is prepared to push out when you expand. Um, because of those 400 minerals that you've dumped in that command center, uh, it's not, it's not, you instead lose that in army, whereas your opponent has that in army. Um, so that's why it's dangerous, and that's why you do have to really be careful. Um, and again, if your opponent is prepared like we were here with our um, gateway mix coupled with immortals, we can push out and do quite a bit of damage. I mean, he did manage to fend back this initial attack, but he lost a ton of workers, lost a majority of his units as well. And all we really have to do at this point, our Icon has been strong this entire time. We haven't taken any damage at our base. Uh, just pump up another control group of units and push out again is basically what we're going to look to do. I mean, as you can see, here we have our forward observer. I got a full scout of his base. Absolutely nothing in comparison to workers to what we have um, because he had to pull so many off the line just to defend that initial attack. And uh, due to that, you know, he's just severely hurting. This is all he's got for army right now. We do see some additional units coming in, um, but unlike our ability to warp in units, it does take their units time, so we can feel pretty comfortable to push out again and then just continue to warp in units here as well and continue to make these immortals and have them rallied to the battlefield. Um, so we're going to be pushing forward here again, scouting with this. We see what's going on. Our forces are sufficient enough to take that out, um, especially with chopping their army in half by using these force fields. Um, it's really not too much he is going to be able to do about it. Picking off these production buildings, if he is timid to engage, an excellent idea as well. Um, this is going to stop him from producing additional units, obviously. Um, pretty pretty standard stuff here. Um, as you can see, we got a little counterattack in the form of a marine. I actually have no idea how that snuck in there, but... That is not important, to be honest with you. Um, because we've kept up the pressure and we've been so aggressive this entire time, uh, our opponent really has little options, um, just defending, and even in their defense, it's not enough. Uh, and primarily, it's because of the timing of when we pushed out, seeing that expansion, um, and the unit composition, of course, very strong as well. Uh, so yeah, guys, as you can see, the Terran opponent does call good game. Uh, due to our timing, seeing that expansion and pushing out with this composition, very, very strong. Uh, a few key things I want to note before I go into the build order. Uh, a lot of times you will see that two gate robo. That is if you use your chrono boost on either units, um, like ar army units, like zealot sentries or <coughs> stalkers, or if you use those chrono boost on that warp gate research. But if you save those chrono boost for your econ, you spend them on your nexus, you can in fact support a 30 gateway. So going for this three gate, 
and robotics facility build. Um, it's going to be very effective. You just go for a general mix of uh, gateway units with sentry stalkers and zealots and then get out those immortals. And again, this is going to be based off your scouting information. There's no reason to get immortals if you saw a fully marine heavy army. If he was going for something, um, for example, like if you were seeing marine banshee or something like that, um, you would instead look to get a robotics bay and get something like colossi out of here. <coughs> or even try to take up the High Templar, but that takes a little bit more time. Um, so just an example, you know, use your scouting information to the best of your ability, uh, figure out what your opponent's doing, and then move on from there. So taking a look at the build order, we started off with a 9 pylon and a 13 gateway. Uh, followed that up with a 15 assimilator. 18, we got that cybernetics core. Uh, 24, as soon as that was done, we started researching our warp gate research. Uh, shortly after that, at 27, we got our second assimilator. 29 is when we drop down the robotics facility and then at 30 came our second gateway and 35 that third gateway once again because of that econ boost that we used our chrono boost for so once again guys this has been for starcraft 2 strategy if you guys like our videos and you like what you see here please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel keep watching and keep on and guys here we go this is going to be the engagement key thing too is um, to kite these phoenixes around as much as possible. Their speed and mobility should be able to allow you to kite them away from the marines as they try to fire up at them. Um, and then just pick off these banshees basically. That's what you're going to be looking to do. Um, and ideally of course you do...